So, as you guys know, the playoffs are in full swing, and so far, there's been some great basketball, individual play, and even clutch shots. Now, every year with the playoffs, when we see these big-time games, big-time shots, we always, always, always become prisoners of the moment and overreact with crazy hot takes. And case in point for this, you have Nick Wright at Fox Sports using Game 4 Lakers series to push an absurd agenda. As in that game, LeBron James hit a very clutch game-tying shot to force overtime. Highly impressive. But after that shot, Nick Wright went on the record saying LeBron James is more clutch than Kobe, MJ, and Steph. And look, saying LeBron's more clutch than Steph, I actually agree with. More clutch than Kobe, it's debatable. But saying more clutch than MJ, I simply don't see it. And I do want to be crystal clear, what Nick Wright was saying is that LeBron James is a better late game shot maker than all those players. And the stats he used conveniently only go back to 1997 at the very edge of Michael Jordan's prime. And look, I can't blame Nick Wright for that, but what I do have a problem with is using two years of Jordan's career when he was 34 and 35 as the basis for LeBron James being more clutch. That in fact is highly disingenuous as well as misleading. And with that being out of the way, when it comes to ESPN, actually, they have Jordan's clutch time stats on record and all of his big time shots recorded. And looking at these numbers, as you'll see, Jordan's full body of work disproves Nick Wright and his overall claims. As looking at game time go ahead shots in the final 24 seconds for LeBron and Jordan's career, Michael Jordan is 9 of 18 shooting at 50%. LeBron James is 11 of 29 at 38%. The final 10 seconds, Michael Jordan is 7 of 15 at 47%. LeBron James, 10 24 at 42%. Now the final 5 seconds, Michael Jordan is 5 of 11 at 45%. And LeBron, 8 of 19 at 42%. Using Nick Wright's own facts and data, Michael Jordan objectively was a better late game shooter than LeBron James. And going one step further with the exact same criteria in the final 24 seconds of the NBA Finals, Michael Jordan is 4 of 8 shooting at 50% and LeBron James 0 of 7 at 0%. And like always, I do want to highlight the NBA Finals because in the finals the stakes are raised and every shot is much more important in the first round, second round, or even conference finals. As looking at Jordan's resume, his shot 98 over Russell dwarfs any LeBron shot in his career. And in my personal view, is up there with Kyrie and Ray Allen as the best and biggest shots in NBA history. Even looking at 97, the game went over Russell, which a buzzer beater was highly clutch. The flu game hit a clutch three down the stretch. And even 91 hit a shot to force OT in Game 3. Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals late in games was a great clutch time shooter. And looking past shooting, in 97, he had the pass to Steve Kerr to win the Finals, and 98, the steal Malone that led to his own shot winning the series. So once again to restate, Nick Wright's own criteria proves Jordan is more clutch than LeBron James. Now, looking past big time shots, being clutch can be defined in many ways. As a big factor in being clutch is how you show up in the fourth quarters of critical games. And looking at these stats, I think once again Jordan is provably better than LeBron in the big time fourth quarter and playoff games. But once again, unfortunately, for Jordan's career, only 97-98 are available with fourth quarter numbers. Even with that being said, Michael Jordan's fourth quarter stats are still better than LeBron James. As looking at 97, Jordan that playoff run averaged 9.6 points per game on 49.3% shooting, the highest of the playoffs. 98, once again led in scoring at 9.0 on 44.8% shooting. 
If you look at LeBron James' entire career, not once when he qualified did he break nine points in the fourth quarters of any playoff run. That's pretty impressive for Jordan, who at age 34 and 35 beats out LeBron James, who was in his prime Miami, Cleveland, and even Los Angeles. And if you stack it up by points per game, at number one, you have Jordan 97, number two, Jordan 98, number three, LeBron 07, number four, LeBron 2018, and number five, LeBron 2015. Of course, Jordan 97 98 was highly impressive, but I can only imagine how good he was in 91 and 93 at his true apex. And going one step further, once again, looking at the NBA Finals, Michael Jordan's fourth quarter play outclasses LeBron James. As 97, Jordan averaged 10.7 points per game, 98, 10.6. LeBron's highest in 2015 was 10.2, also very impressive, 07, 9.8, and 2016, 9.5. I think it needs to be acknowledged, LeBron in the fourth quarters, even late game shooting, is definitely underrated and undervalued. The only point I'm making, actually I'm making two points, first off LeBron James, his clutch resume is definitely better than what you think, but secondly, Michael Jordan in the clutch is still better than LeBron James. And after doing all this research, I did notice a theme. Michael Jordan 97 arguably is the most clutch player of all time. As for that entire playoff run, he ranks third all time in fourth quarter finals points per game, only behind Dirk and Shaq. And looking at fourth quarter scoring in general, for the entire playoff run, he ranks second all time, only behind Dirk in 2011. Based off the data, the eye test, and watching the games, seeing the big shots, 2011 Dirk 97 Jordan, I would personally argue the top two most clutch playoff runs in NBA history. And speaking of clutch, according to NBA.com NBA stats, that is defined as the last five minutes of the game within five points. So looking at Jordan's clutch time stats, all we have is 97 and 98. In 97, he averaged 5.8 points per game on 50% shooting, 98, 6.0 on 39.1%. Looking at LeBron's best ever clutch time scoring run, that was in 2013, where he averaged 5.0 on 38.5% shooting. Definitely not bad, but compared to Jordan, it pales in comparison. And to add some more context, LeBron in 2011, making a clutch time scoring, averaged 0.0 .0 points per game on 0.0% shooting. In 2015, averaged 3.4 points per game on 17.6% shooting. I want to make it crystal clear, LeBron in the clutch isn't awful, isn't bad, and actually is above average. But looking at his highs and his lows, his lows are much lower than Jordan, and his highs aren't as high. And one thing I did find highly intriguing, when looking at Jordan's Bulls team, now in 2023 everyone says his team was stacked, they were loaded, and even a super team. But looking back at the actual numbers, specifically the clutch numbers, they paint a very different story. As Jordan 97, when it came to clutch time points for the entire playoff run, had 55 on 51.3% shooting. His entire Bulls supporting cast, Pippen, Luke Longley, Tony Kukoc, even Dennis, only had 40 points combined on 50% shooting. And looking at the NBA Finals, once again, where it mattered most, Michael Jordan had 23 points on 50% shooting, compared to his Bulls teammates, who had 12 on 33%. Now, just seeing all this data, all these facts, one response I know I'll get is LeBron James has more buzzer beaters than Jordan. And look, that is true. LeBron has five and Jordan has three. But what I will say, when looking at buzzer beaters, at least stats wise, it's very similar to getting a triple double. For example, you might have one guy who has 20, 10, and 10 and gets that triple double. 
compared to another guy who has 45, 5, and 5. That guy who had 45, 5, and 5 technically didn't have a triple double, but still was better than the guy who had 20, 10, and 10. What I'm basically saying is if you hit a buzzer beater, that is impressive. But making a shot only 1.5 seconds left, 0.5, even 0.1 is still just as impressive as a buzzer beater. And looking at LeBron's career, if you look at his game winners and his buzzer beaters, all of them came before the NBA Finals and never came in Game 6 or Game 7. And not one single game was his Heat team, Cavs team, or even Lakers facing elimination. Compared to Jordan, who in 89 hit his shot facing elimination down one point with the game on the line. Even looking at the NBA Finals 97, Michael Jordan Game 1 hit a buzzer beater over Russell. And I think that right there is a pretty good example. Jordan 97 hit a buzzer beater. But is that shot being a buzzer beater more important or impactful than a shot in 98 also over Russell? I think that right there shows you guys the term buzzer beater is kind of misleading. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.